Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to the Huda Pole King of TV Bowling. Today, we come to you from Penthouse Lanes in St. Bernard. I'm Tom Brenneman, along with Jennifer Kleekamp and David Neurath. And Jen, we're at another house run by the, the Betting House Brothers, and great place. It is another image-making betting house center. I just love these centers. Today, by the way, they have a St. Patrick's Day Classic going on, and they have shifts at 12, 33, and 6. We'll talk a little bit about that as the show goes on. And David, our first match today. First match features lefty against lefty, and uh, we're going to see some pretty radical line differences. Jerry Eckel, for example, slow, deliberate, hits his mark, and he covers a lot less boards than the big bender he's going to be facing in Kerry Logan. Now, Kerry Logan is going to be just twisting it up for all it's worth, and he does it with very, very little effort, Tommy. Good bowlers, it's going to be a good match. See what happens. Now, you know, ever since Riga got knocked out a few weeks back, it's been a revolving door for our king. Anybody in particular you like today? Well, again, we've got two lefties, we've got two righties, so the condition itself isn't really going to be a factor today, Tommy. I don't know. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? <laughs> we'll find out. It's all coming up next on the Unipole King of TV Bowling. Cincinnati BPA's Hudipole King of Bowling. Brought to you by Hudipole 14K, the Cincinnati legend. Remember the name, you'll never forget the taste. Now again, Cincinnati, and the flavor's pure 14K. Time to enjoy the crisp, refreshing taste of a Cincinnati legend. Beautiful 14K. Remember the name. You'll never forget the taste. Nothing but the seven pin or the ten. Each bowler making their spares until the critical fifth frame. We will now pick up the action. Frame seven, Jerry Eckel, left lane. He's cut the deficit to eight pins. He has a strike working. He can take the lead by two pins with a strike right here. What a time to, to miss and miss badly. Well, again, the pressure gets to you. He knows what the score is. He knew. You know, he, he knew how important that particular shot could have been in the overall outcome of the match. And he pulled the ball, just flat and simple. Jen, you mentioned we had qualifying going on uh, next week in Indiana. Yeah. Uh, how can the folks uh, find out how they can get involved? You can call the BPA office at 761-9274 on Monday to make your reservation. And do get a time, because a lot of times if you just walk in, you will not be guaranteed a spot. So do call and make a reservation. And, of course, we will be taping the show next Sunday. Uh, we'll be coming from Holly Lanes, out in Amelia. Out on the east side of town, for a change. A little closer to home. Maybe for you. Maybe for you. Jeez. <laughs> We're going to have to get a full hey, tank I got to rub it in. You guys have been doing it to me every week. <laughs> full tank of gas and a trip tick for me. <laughs> All right, Kerry Logan needs to strike. And again, Dave, I mean, you, you pointed it out so well earlier, just not getting the help from the pins. We went with a little more loft this time, Tommy. Let's watch it here on the replay. Watch how far out in the lane that ball goes before it hits. See there? Almost to the arrows. Now that's going to delay the roll. It always delays the roll. And then the, watch the ball deflect to the left. Right there, it deflects, takes the two pin straight back, and the four pin goes to the channel, tries to come out to no avail. He missed it last time. Let's watch now. He's got it this time. Why would have... I, I guess... 
noticing, taking a look at that loft, why would Kerry change at this point? He was he had his line dead on the money, his first four balls, and even the two he missed. Well, as you can bad miss. Exactly, Tommy. A seven-pin lead to Kerry Logan, as the score sheet will show you. Seven pins, both players with a spare up in the seventh. Why should anyone make a change? I'm not sure he has. Uh, human machines make minor changes without knowing about it. Kerry, even though he lofts the ball more than a lot of players, it's one of the most difficult things to control, the amount of loft. He's back on track. That ball looked great. Yeah, it did. Right there, you're looking. You all right, Jim? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. I'm here. Okay. We're all looking right. at Tony Plank and Connie Wagner there from the Hudipal Brewery and Jerry Bettinghouse. And there's our Poinky to the left over there. Mm -hmm. Fine know. showing. we got a nice crowd here today. Nice showing from uh, Hudipal. Yeah, they've and got quite a few folks out. To do. We also have Bob Schwarkin here. Mike Schott, the big wig. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, the fine gentleman. Well, the nicest fine big gentleman. wigs you're going to meet, I'll tell you. He, Absolutely. He and I had an extensive conversation the other day. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, making sure that uh, more little kings bite the dust in the very near future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're here. <laughs> Seven pins, still the deficit. Both players strike in the eighth. We have a match. Don't go away. Don't get a hootie yet. Send send a runner for one. You, you don't want to miss any shots. Send the dog <laughs> to get it. My dog can do that. I don't believe it. I'm telling it. you. You go to the refrigerator, sure. crack that bad boy open, and next thing you know, I got a cold hootie and checking out some, some I mean, bowling action on the two. I gotta, Forget it, right? I got to talk to you about this. Oh, thing. now there's some help. First time today we've seen it. Yep, you're right. Not a bad hit, but it's going to deflect. We can watch it on the replay. Watch the ball. Keep your eyes on the ball as it hits the one-two pocket. It's going to go to the left. Barely touch the five pin. Second one back in the middle of your screen. Right there. It just oh Something yeah, it just starts else, to touch it. Now, just starts to touch it. We got a we've got a little bit of an angle change here because the cameras are set off to the right. It couldn't have touched it by any more than an eighth of an inch. Unbelievable. How quickly the momentum changes, Tom. You alluded to it in the fifth frame when Kerry Logan missed the seven pin. He's been labeling the pocket every shot. He had a seven pin lead until this frame. He's now three pins down. Amazing. We are also still holding youth qualifying every week and also queen qualifying, but the youth get to qualify uh, in the morning at eight and nine o'clock, the early shifts on Saturday and Sunday. And they will have a finals on May 1st. And it's handicapped 90% for girls and 80% for boys. Speaking of Queen, I believe, uh, Jen, didn't you uh, come out uh, top yeah. dog this week? Heck yeah. <laughs> Good Heck deal. Yeah. Top dog. Well, I didn't mean that in a... <laughs> Forget it. Okay. I knew when I said it, we I was asking for trouble. <laughs> Situations this, 10th frame. Kerry Logan can only do one thing, and that's strike on this ball to give any kind of pleasure. Oh! oh. There you go. He'll take it. You bet he will. He did what he had to do, Tommy. He, he threw a, a very good shot. Gave it a little more room this time. The crash seven was not a factor. He looked for that powerful ball that he throws to give him a mixing, acting strike. So if he can double here, that's going to force Jerry to get the first one, Dave? Exactly. He's got to have this one. See the look of concentration. He knows what he has to do, and he's looking good. Well, he, again, he went with the lighter shot, choosing to go for pin action rather than to leave the strong seven again. He leaves the two eight. Now, pin count is very, very critical. We're only talking a three pin swing here, ladies and gentlemen, so he needs both of these. And if he does, he'll ring out with a two sixteen. Look out, got it. Okay, now what does Jerry Eckel have to do, David, to seal this one? Well, let's do some quick calculations here. Got uh, an eight count in the spare, and another eight count should get us there. There you take a look at the score. Logan finishes up at 216. Jerry Eckel. He has had his problems the last few weeks on our show, but an opportunity today to advance to our second match. He needs a good count here, Tommy. Re a strike would put him in a great position, but he needs a good count. He's got it. Oh. Well, this time he 
looked pressure right in the face and said, get out of my way. <laughs> okay, now what, what we've got here again is, is pretty academic. Jerry needs to give me a decent count on this ball, and he can move into match number two. And the way he's been hitting the pocket, it's hard to believe we're going to see anything else, but you never know. Here we go. Uh, like you said, the way he's been hitting the pocket, that'll just about wrap it up for Mr. Echo. Gives him a good game, and he earned it. He sure did. Boy, he started off and... He did not fold under the pressure. Kerry Logan came out smoking in this match. First four he threw were 10 in the pit. Echo was behind by 20, but came back and now will advance to our second match. We've got that. Yeah, we're going to be back, and we're going to see the infamous gold ball contest. There you see it, the winner, 237 to 216, Jerry Echo in match number two. Let's see what the Golden Ball Contest looks like today.